I give Lucy the Valiant. To the great western woods, Edmund the Just. To the radiant southern sun, Susan the Gentle. And to the clear north sky, Peter the Magnificent. Once a king or queen of Narnia, always a king or queen of Narnia. May your wisdom grace us until the stars rain down from the heavens. Father, we thank you that your word says how blessed is he whose strength is in you, whose heart is a highway to your house. Passing to the valley of tears, a disappointment, they make it a fountain. Even the early rain covers it with blessing. How much more the greater later rain? They're going to be poured forth upon each and every one of us because we're going to go forth from strength to strength because your word says the path of the righteous getting stronger, brighter and brighter to the break of dawn. We live this year. This year we're going to usher in just a moment. It's going, Lord, to bring on even the greatest, the best years that we have experienced. So we commit the whole morning to you. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we rebuild and bind every foul, wicked evil spirit. We're going to go from here right now in Jesus' name that your word may have free cause in the midst of us. And everybody scream, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What year is this? The year of his crowning favor. And we're going to proclaim it. Isaiah 61 verse 2 says, To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. What amazing promise that God has given us that we've got to proclaim, all right, the year of His favor. Because it's the year of His favor, we're going to have that crown. We talk about different types of crown. They got ones like just now you saw the presentation for different types of crown. The same way, how many of us know that God has different, different crowns for us? Last week or week before last, we talked about the crown of His beauty and honor in place of ashes. In order to get a beauty, the crown of beauty, we've got to let go of the ashes. Perhaps some of you are going to let go of the ashes of your disappointing experiences. Let go of the, the ashes of perhaps um, regrets, poor choices, plunders they've made. Or maybe the, the oil of perhaps the wrong thing that you've done, the wrong ideas that really didn't work, and the lay hold of God's idea. And talk about the crown of God's beauty. It's also speak of honor. We talk about Abishai. Remember, uh, Abishai was a guy that was not even listed among the uh, greatest of the great of David's heroes, but he was honored. He was given the crown of beauty, the crown of honor, more than even the three mighty men of David. And there is because, among many, I'm not going to be able to do so much review on Abishai. Get the tape. Anyway, you need your CD anyway. And uh, one of the things that shines in Abishai is that he was able to let go of his idea. He thought, remember, it was God's idea. It's how man, God has given Saul into our hand. Let's finish Saul off. I don't think he was manipulating. I know some people, they go around manipulating using the name of God. The Lord says, he wanted me to start this business with your investment. <laughs> the Lord say, you've got to start a ministry and you've got to join my ministry. And sometimes there's spiritual manipulation. But in the case of Abishai, it was not. It was just sincerely wrong. He thought it was God's idea. Many of us sometimes have that kind of a thinking. It's God's idea, but later on it turned out to be just our human idea and it's just wrong. You know, we may be sincere, it's sincerely wrong. And the beautiful thing about Abishai was when he was being corrected by the king. Man, he was open to correction. It's because of that, among other reasons, you can look up uh, in the tape, um, Abishai was crowned with a beauty, crowned with honor more than all the other even though he doesn't have the position, just like today, as all you may not have the position of his own pastor, not even a society member, but because you have that shining quality that Abishai has, you've got to be crowned by God with that beauty of honor. And uh, today we talk about the oil, another crown that 
crown of the oil of gladness in place of mourning. Say oil of gladness in place of mourning. Now we talk about mourning. You think of more than just disappointment. Mourning takes place when something died or somebody died. Maybe some of you are mourning the death of a loved one. Maybe the death of a relationship. Maybe a dream. Maybe a hope was dashed. And God is about to pour forth upon each and every one of us the oil, that crown of the oil of His gladness. Can I overcome that spirit of mourning to bring us hope? And we talk about hope. It's not just a wish. When the crown of the oil of His gladness come upon us, it's more than just giving us hope. More than just giving us a new dream, that oil of His gladness is going to give us the enabling, the power to overcome what we couldn't do in the natural. In the natural, it is hopelessness. In the natural, you don't have the ability. But when the oil of gladness come, you're going to have not just the hope and the dream. You're going to have the enabling. So remember, we talk about the oil of His gladness. We're talking more than just a new dream. New possibility. We talk about the enabling, the provision for that dream to be fulfilled in this year. I can think of a brother, Matthew Barnett, Pastor Matthew Barnett, nineteen years ago or so. His father, Tommy Barnett, pastor of a, one of the largest churches in America, sent Matthew Barnett to slums in the middle of Los Angeles.、Uh, if you go to the states, some of these big cities,、uh, people are moving out of the big cities to the suburbs because the inner city has become run down. I, I was in Louisiana, and it was like the place was run down, the inner city, and it was just filled with all kinds of people, drug addicts and pushers and prostitutes. Just a typical, and and that place it was a church that was、uh, thriving, but. They had a nice building, 600 seating capacity, but it was reduced to 20 because people just move away to the suburbs. And Matthew was sent by the father to go and take over the church, and he he went there with great hope to wow do a great church like his father did, Tommy Barnett in Phoenix, Arizona. But he was disappointed. In a couple of months, that church reduced from 20 people to zero. He was completely heartbroken. His dream was shattered. And he was walking to the streets、uh, in the slum area. He cried before God. He said, "God, you sent me here to build a great church, and now I have nothing." And God began to envelop him with the oil of His gladness. And God began to birth forth a new dream on the inside of him. His dream will be to ignite dreams with people that have lost their dream, prostitutes, pushers, and、uh, drug addicts. How many of us know? At one time, these people are not born a prostitute. They are not born with an ambition to be a drug pusher. How many of you go to somebody? So, what's your dream in life? What is your ambition? Oh, pastor, I dream to be a prostitute. Oh, I dream to be a drug pusher. Oh, I dream to be a drug addict. Nobody in the right mind would have got up a dream. One day they have great dream, but that dream was shattered. And God called Matthew Barnett to be a person that is going to be release that same oil of gladness upon people. That they whose dreams has been shattered, has been broken, will be enveloped with the crown of the oil of His gladness. And it's not just bursting for new dreams. It's not just about having new hope. It is to be given the enabling, the power to fulfill that dream. That's the oil of gladness. And that church now, at the moment, is one of the biggest churches in in the states, and reaching out to fifty thousand people a month. They bought over the entire hospital facility and and used that to bring in prostitutes, to bring in pushers, to bring in drug addicts. And we helped them. Many of them eventually became the pastors of that particular church. They were enveloped. In the midst of hopelessness, with the oil of gladness, in the midst of death, death of a vision. Now, why do you think that we need the oil of gladness? Because we are living in the world that are thriving on negativity. You look at the newspaper; it's all about bad news. This no good, that no good, and our mind is so saturated with the voices of what you cannot do, the voices of condemnation. You make too many mistakes. You're too washed up. You never have a new beginning.、Uh, the voices of、uh, uh, people pushing you down. You're just an average person. You're never going to thrive. Never going to make it. You're not attractive. You're too old.、Uh, you don't have the ability. You don't have what it takes. 
The voices of negativity. You're not careful. You allow those voices to come in. It's going to take root. That seed is going to germinate. Now, there's nothing much we can do about people、uh, speaking negative over us. We cannot stop them from talking negative.、Uh, we cannot prevent those voices from sounding. But you can stop dwelling in it. And God is going to give us a special anointing this morning. They're going to enable us to deal with those voices, the negative voices. Look at.、It. Uh, Psalm 65 talking about the special anointing. They're going to release. They're going to help us to overcome those voices. Psalm 65 verse 11. You fill its terraces with water. You deepen its furrows. You make it soft with showers. You bless the sprouting of it. In the other translation, that you cause the sprouting of it. This is wonderful. How many of us? It's not just about oh, pastor. In the natural, I don't have the bullet. He's not talking about the natural. He's talking about the anointing. Talking about the oil. Oil always talk about the anointing. That anointing gonna come and enable us to fulfill that. It's not about you fulfilling your dream. It's about God fulfilling His dream in your life. Continue. You crown the year with a bountiful harvest. Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. Wow, the word "bountiful harvest" is the Hebrew word "tov." Say "tov." In the Holy Land, you say "buka tov." Good morning, good things. All right, the, the Hebrew word "tov" means good thing, pleasurable thing, pleasant thing. It means prosperity. Pastor, are you preaching the prosperity gospel? Absolutely not. We are not preaching the prosperity gospel. Neither are we preaching the poverty gospel. We are preaching the full gospel. In other words, God has answered to every situation in our life, fulfilling、uh, a blessing in every areas of our life. Okay. It says that even the hard pathway. How many must know that the pathway that you may be taking may be tough. And some of you may even go to the point of not just mourning. And you just get up, hope altogether. Even the hard pathway overflows with abundance. Say abundance. That word abundance in the Hebrew is dashen. Say dashen. It simply means fat. <laughs> the person on the right, you gotta have a fat year. Your pathway is gonna overflow with fatness. And of course, we talk about fatness symbolically, figuratively. It means abundance. And I believe fatness also refers to the anointing. Man, the pathway, gonna fill with God's anointing for us. All right. In the nature, there is no hope, but when the anointing, the oil, or of His gladness, the crown of the oil of His gladness come, friend, you're gonna be able to do things beyond your natural ability. And how is this oil? How is this anointing being released? Now, in order to understand the Bible, we got to interpret the Bible in its proper context. So let's take up a few verses. Up, take up Psalm 65. Look up a few verses. Go up to verse four, and this is the context of verse 11, where God is going to fill our pathway with the oil of His gladness. And the context, verse four says, "Blessed is the man you choose and cause to approach you, that he may dwell in your court." We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house. Now, God's chosen way to release the oil of His gladness is through His house. In today's modern context, to be in the church, God's way is to release His anointing through the church. I'm reminded of His goodness, His abundance, His store up. All right, His riches is store up in His house. The key way that God can release the oil of gladness is through the local church. Psalm 92, verse 13. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Wow, how many must know when you are planted in God's house, you're going to flourish. So, Pastor, I, I believe the church, of course, but it's you know, the,、uh, I, I can't belong to any church because church is universal, and it's very true. But you know, this is the, way, the word church occurs 114 times in the entire New Testament, and out of the 114 times, 90 times refers to local churches like Ephesus, Thessalonica. In the book of Revelation, you see seven different local churches, and by all means, local churches are not perfect. But how many of us know it is still God's chosen path to release that oil of gladness, despite its imperfection? God's grace, God's anointing, is still being released. Just like David, remember he made the poor choice as a leader. He chose to stay in Ziklag. And then that Ziklag city was being devastated by the Amalekites. They took away the women, the children, everything. Burned the city down. And when the, the man came back, and the city was burned down, the man cried until there was no more tears. And about the stone David, wrong leadership. <laughs> and the Bible say David strengthened himself in the Lord. He was enveloped with the 
crown of his gladness. And God began to build forth a new dream. Go and pursue with the anointing, not just go, but with the anointing, with the favor, with the power. They took the enemy, bring back all the uh, children and all the women, all the goods. Noted that within 48 hours, he was crowned king of all Israel. Put it this way, despite the imperfect king, and make that choice. How many must know God's anointing, God's grace covers our imperfection and your imperfection. You may make poor choice in your business, but it is way, God's grace can still work in your poor choices. And other people say, Amen. At the beginning, it is God's way to release the oil of his gladness through the local church. But the key thing is those that are planted. Say planted. How many of you planted a durian tree and uprooted every month to see the root? You've got to be planted where God has placed you. You don't move around. <laughs> oh, I have more friends there, I go over there. Oh, the facilities are there, I better I go there. Oh, hey friends, you don't just uproot yourself. Where you are planted, where God has placed you. And that's where God has planted you. And it's just when you are about to flourish, just when the durian tree is going to bring forth the, the 29 and you uproot the tree. You're not going to be able to go very far. And in the local church, God released that oil. And particularly today, we're going to pray a corporate prayer. When you pray as an individual, God's going to answer your prayer. But the Bible says, when two or three are gathered, not when the corporate anointing comes, there's going to be a release of faith to help us, or the oil of His gladness, the anointing of the oil of His gladness, the crown that's going to come. And friend, you're going to have a lot of amazing testimony. Number two, Second way, the uh, anointing, the oil of gladness, is going to be released in our life to reignite the dream. Not to give us a new dream, but give us an anointing, give us the power to fulfill those dreams. Is the anointing of His Word. Look at Isaiah 55, verse 2. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? You notice? Why do you spend money on things that really not satisfy? Now, what about money? Money talks about effort. Money is a picture of effort. Why do we put a lot of effort in things that really doesn't satisfy? For example, there's nothing wrong against uh, computer games, nothing wrong against watching television, nothing wrong with all this thing, reading a novel, storybook, newspaper. But if that takes more time than you reading the Word of God, you're just forfeiting yourself from the oil of His gladness. It's going to be released. The oil, the anointing is going to come to help us to fulfill the dream. They give us anointing, the power to fulfill the dream that God has for us. And let's go on. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Notice, eat what is good. Good is the word tough again. Good thing, pressurable thing. And the word abundance is again in the Hebrew is oil, deshen. How do you get the goodness? How do you get the deshen? How do you get all this oil of enabling? Well, listen. Say, listen. Put a person on the right, put a ear and say, listen. <laughs> all right. And the word listen in the Hebrew is shema, shema. Say, shema, shema. Now, when God says do something once, <laughs> you got to listen. When God say two times, you better listen. He say, listen, listen carefully to who? Me, and eat what is tough, what is good. So the key is to keep listening. Why keep listening? Because it is God's word. The Bible in your hand, or in your computer, or in your laptop, is God's word for you. God's destiny, God's promises for you. Lay hold of those words and receive that crown of the oil enabling power to help you fulfill the vision that God has for you in your life. How many of when you listen, miracle take place? There was this guy in the Bible that uh, Paul was preaching. I think it was um, in Acts 14, and uh, look at verse 9. Paul saw faith in the man born lame stand up. The guy wow. jumped. Wow, Paul saw the faith and stand up. And the guy jumped. In other words, he was able to do things beyond his natural ability. He was born lame. He, he didn't have the ability. He was born lame, but he was able to jump. In other words, he was able to do things beyond his natural ability. I'm going to do things beyond your natural ability. What is the key? Look up. Remember, we always read the Bible and we look at the context. The context, verse 7. They are continually preaching the good news. Wow. 
What are the two keywords continually? In other words, you've got to keep listening. It's the reason why we give you the CD. All right? Completely free of charge. <laughs> Pastor, I heard the message. Keep hearing. How does the miracle take place? As that man continually listening to the preaching of what? Not what the newspapers say, what Newsweek say, not Times Magazine say. What good news. Make sure what you listen is good news. Make sure what you hear is grace-filled messages. You're going to see amazing, astounding miracles in your life. Wonderful Jesus. And we could have put even the seven messages in the podcast. So some of you may like to download it in your cell phone. It's easier in the, in the car. Okay, verse three. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live. Say, incline your ear. Now, what does it mean to incline your ear? Now, see, as I said earlier, the world is filled with all kinds of negative voices. Voices that condemn you. You make too many mistakes, you're too washed up, you're finished. Voices that say you don't have the ability, you're just average, just be content not to thrive. All right? Uh, voices that say, well, um, you're too old. Uh, you are too insignificant. There's nothing good going to happen this coming year. Voices are negative. There's nothing much we can uh, do in terms of stopping people that speaking negative. Sometimes the voice comes from ourselves. What can we do? <laughs> we cannot stop them. We cannot prevent the negative voices, but we can prevent them from taking root because those words are like seeds. It's going to be planted. You allow it to be planted, you've got to take root. And Hamra must know man's word. Hamra must know man does not determine your destiny. God determine your destiny. I heard the story of uh, you know, Walt Disney, all right? uh, one of the most creative uh, movie uh, directors in the world. I mean, Walt Disney was being told by the, his teacher, he's not creative. You know, he went on to found uh, the Walt Disney studio, all right? and all the creative things that come out of that movie studio. So Winston Churchill flops the sixth grade. <laughs> Teacher told him, you're not going to amount to anything in life. Uh, you're not that intelligent. But he rose to become the prime minister of the world empire of the day, taking the country through the greatest challenges through the Second World War. Friend, Hamra must know, man, don't determine your destiny. Don't allow negative voices to freeze whatever God has placed in your heart. And by the way, experts can be wrong. <laughs> Those that built the Titanic were professional experts. It sank. But the guy that built the ark are non-professional. They were the amateurs. It floats. Experts are not always right. And as long as you respect them, I think I think of Susan Boy, how many of Susan Boy? When she was being born, the mother go through a birth process, painful process, and deprave of oxygen. The expert say the doctor. And sometimes these experts I say are with a good innocence. They tell the fact. But how many know facts don't determine your destiny? The doctor say, don't expect too much from this girl. Because he's gonna have a learning disability. And Susan grew up with all kinds of feelings of inferiority. People laughed at her. She is Susan Simple. And, but she was faithful in the local church. The oil of gladness enveloped him. God began to birth forth a dream that she could be a professional. Singer. She signed up for Britain Got Talent Contest. But you notice that she was laughed at, just at by Simon Coburn. Take a look at this video clip. <laughs> Hi, what's your name, darling? My name is Susan Boyle. Okay, uh, Susan, and where are you from? I am from Blackburn, near Bathgate, West Lothian. It's a big town. It's a sort of collection of... It's, it's You're from Jinjiang. Villages. I had to think there. And how old are you, Susan? You're too I'm old. I'm 47. Okay, what's the dream? I, I'm trying to be a professional singer. And why hasn't it worked out so far, Susan? I've never been given the chance before, but he's hoping it will change. 
Okay, and who would you like to be as successful as? Elaine Page. Elaine Page. What are you going to sing tonight? I'm going to sing I Dreamed a Dream from the Miserables. Okay, big song. <laughs> the laugh, the cheer. I dream the dream in time gone by. Wow, standing ovation. You know, Susan made it great. I mean, her CD that she recorded shortly was quickest selling album in the country's history, outbeating five top charts put together. She was enveloped with the oil of his gladness. And other people say, Amen. And sometimes, put it this way, we cannot stop those negative voices. Sometimes even come from your own loved one. When God wanted to anoint a new king, the prophet Samuel was being sent to the house of J.C. And J.C. said, okay, uh, you want to anoint one of my sons? He brought all the sons. He thought that is all that he has. And Samuel looked at each one of them. They're tall and handsome. And God said, no. Is there any more son? There's one more. And suddenly Samuel remembered. But he was not taken into the house in the beginning because even his own father thinks that Samuel is too small, too insignificant. He doesn't have ability. He's not smart enough. And later on, when he was being sent to bring food to the brother, the brother spiked him and said, with whom have you left that few sheep? He was put down. And friend, let me tell you, David did not bow down to those negative voices. How do I know? When he faced Goliath, he said, you uncircumcised Philistine. What does it imply? It means that I am a child of the covenant. It is not who I am. It is whose I am. And the oil, the crown of the oil of his anointing enveloped him. He rose up to be the giant killer. Amen. I can think of Rachel. When Rachel gave birth to Benjamin, it was through an excruciating, very painful process. And Rachel actually died. And with her last breath, she said in Genesis 35 verse 18, And so it was, as her soul was departing, that she called his name Ben-Oni. Ben-Oni. You know what is the meaning of the Hebrew word Ben-Oni? son of my pain. How would you feel you are Benjamin? Grow up in life. Hello, you are the child of pain that caused the pain of your mother, the, the death of your mother. But just about that time, Jacob came in and it was being told that your son is the son of pain and something arises on the inside of Jacob. And he said, no way. My son shall not be called ben Oni. My son will be called Benjamin. You know, you know what, what is the word Benjamin means? It means son of my right hand, son of my strength. Friend of the the Bible says, incline your ear to his word. What is the key to the anointing that could come, the oil of his gladness? Isaiah 55 verse 3 say, incline your ear and come to me. In other words, you've got to bow down. Not to the voice of negativity, not to the voice that condemns you, your worship. Whenever those voices come, something should arise on the inside of you and say no to those voices. You cannot stop people from speaking negative. You cannot stop people from slandering you, but you can stop dwelling on it. Stop inclining your ear to it. When people come and say, you're finished, you, 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 you make too many big, bad choices, you make too many mistakes, you're too washed up, voices of condemnation, you should rise up with the voice of his affirmation that God's mercy and grace are bigger than all my mistakes, that God has a solution for me before even the problem arises. That is the voice of the oil of his gladness. As you incline not to those negative voices, you incline to what God say in your life. 
And when the voices of negativity come up, haunting at you and say that you're not valuable, you should rise up within you, like Jacob, something on the inside of him arises and says, No, I am not insignificant. I am a treasured possession. I am a purchased possession infinitely valuable in the eyes. And somebody calls you, you're just average. You're not going to amount to anything in life. You're not going to thrive. Something on the inside of you should arise and say, I'm not average. I'm a child of the Most High God. I have God's DNA. I have God's very gene on the inside of you. And someone comes to you and say that you're not talented. You don't have the ability. You're not attractive. Something should arise on the inside of you and say, I am a masterpiece. I'm beautifully, wonderfully made. Today, God wants to release upon you the oil of His gladness. So the key thing is, let God's anointing, the crown of the oil of His gladness, and the love, give it the enabling. God releases the dream, and God gives the anointing. And God is going to release upon you the crown of His anointing. God is not going to give you a dream without giving the anointing to fulfill that dream. How is that anointing going to flow? The anointing that comes from His house, planted in the house, they flourish in the courts of the Lord. And then the anointing of the Word of God that set us free from man's way and man's limitation. When man wants to put a limit to what God has for you, hammer must know your God can take you beyond human limitation. Lastly, the anointing of a sacrifice. You know the word in the Hebrew, the shen, is absolutely fantastic. It means oil. It means abundance. It means the anointing, the ability. But the most beautiful part of it, the most beautiful meaning of the word deshen is the oily ashes of the burnt sacrifice. Say the oily, fatty ashes of the sacrifice. You know, talking about the oily ashes, and our path is dripping with the ashes of the burnt offering. In other words, when we walk, we walk in the path of Christ's sacrifice for us. Our focus is not on how we sacrifice. And I thank God for those people that sacrifice their time, their energy for the for example, the uh, Christmas celebration. But Hammer must know the greatest path that you and I can take is the path of the sacrifice of Christ's burnt offering for us. Friend, the more you understand what Christ did for us, the more you're going to get the anointing to be able to fulfill the dream that has died, the relationship that has died, the possibilities that have died, in the midst of all the negative voices, it is that path, all right? And talking about ashes, the ashes are the final product of a burning process. You cannot burn ashes. You cannot reduce the ashes to nothingness. The ashes are the final product. Instead of giving me the ashes, are the final product. Now, what does that mean? It simply means this. When Christ died for us on the cross, the ashes that come of his sacrifice is a final product. What Christ did for us is once and for all. It is a final product. You cannot add to his sacrifice. You can only walk on the ashes of those sacrifices. And the key for us to experience the astounding blessing is to keep focusing what Christ did for us on the cross. I wonder why we only do the anointing of the anointing oil after the Holy Communion. Because there's nothing magical about the anointing oil. 
The anointing oil got the anointing, that enabling. Amazing testimony from the anointing oil. It's nothing by itself. It's not magical. It comes from the blood of Christ. The ashes, the fatty ashes are the burnt sacrifice. And the, the reason why we do that is because uh, the, the priests would do the anointing oil after blood being applied. The same thing. Talk about the crowning scene in Narnia. And it is a really great finale. Right? We cannot do any, everything in a concert with that time. But it is a fitting finale to have the crowning scene in the church because it is the oil of his gladness going to be released through the local church, though imperfect it may be. It is through the local church, the preaching of the word, that when we hear negative voices, something arises on the inside of us. No, this is my destiny. Man will not determine my destiny. My God determine my destiny. God say, I am his treasured possession. And the voices say, you are nothing. The kidding is, the crowning scene happened. It end because Aslan gave his life. We're able to be crowned as kings and priests is because what Christ did for us on the cross. Look at Revelation 5 and uh, look at verse 9 and they sang a new song. How many of us know we can sing a new song today? Because that, of course, speaks of new beginning. It's because, look at verse 9. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood, out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Because Christ was slain. Christ was our burnt offering. And because of him, we made kings and priests unto our God. And friend, as kings, the Bible says we are crowned with different, different crowns. The week before last, we talk about the crown that is beauty and honor. That is the Abishai anointing. All right, don't have time to get, it, get the tape. And today we talk about the oil of his gladness. Different, different crowns, just like you heard Aslan crowning Lucy the Valiant with a crown of Valiant. You notice Lucy was not someone very Valiant. But you know what? God's crown is going to take you beyond the natural to what you cannot do in the natural. Because that oil of anointing is going to enable you, uh, empower you to fulfill dreams that in the natural is impossible. Pastor, I don't have the connection. And it's true. But you have supernatural connection. Susan was crowned, the crown of gentleness. And you know the story in Narnia. Susan was by no means gentle. But remember that crown makes us a new person. Give us the anointing, the strength to do that which is not possible in the natural. And of course, you know, Edmund was crowned with the crown of just. And definitely Edmund was a traitor. But how many know that crown makes a lot of difference because of Christ's death on the cross. The Bible says he has crowned us with the crown of his righteousness. The key thing is, my friend, it is that oil of his uh, gladness that's going to enable us to face up to all those negative voices and not bow down to those negative voices and rose up to God's destiny for us. And all of us say, Amen. We cannot stop people from speaking negative. We cannot prevent people from talking negative. But we can stop paying attention, not dwelling. When you hear all those negative voices, something should arise on the inside of us. God's Word got to release that oil of His gladness. But Pastor, when I hear those negative voices, nothing come out there because there is no input. That's the reason why it's important to have the right input. That's why we gave you the CD to listen. Those voices are possibility. And you don't have the copy of the thousandfold increased CD, lay hold of it, listen to it. So that when the voices come, you're going to be able, the negative voices come, something on the inside arise. You're going to be able to release that oil of gladness in place of mourning. Some weeks ago, we heard the passing of Nelson Mandela, a guy that had gone through much in life, 27 years 
in solitary confinement. People ask him, are you bitter? To say he's not bitter, he said, it would not be honest. But one of the most remarkable quotes that he mentioned before he died, he said this, As I walk out of the door towards the gate that would lead me to my freedom, I know if I didn't leave my bitterness and hatred behind, I would still be in prison. He may be set free, he understood that, but he didn't leave. If he didn't leave that bitterness behind, he would still be in bondage. This coming year, let go of the ashes of bitterness. When you forgive, people are set free. Foremost of the people that set free is you yourself. Nelson Mandela say, bitterness is like drinking poison and hoping somebody else will die. The fact is that if you drink poison, you die. And that's what bitterness is. And God says, let go. Let go the ashes. And God is going to crown you with the oil of his gladness in place of mourning. And we're able to receive that crown is because of the ashes, the oily ashes of a sacrifice. We'd like to close, give an opportunity for those of you who have not known Jesus Christ to be Lord of your life. To say this prayer, would you join together with me to receive Christ into your life? Say together with me, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die for me on the cross. Right now, I receive him as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, and out of you, the scream. If you have said that prayer and want to know more or have any feedback, please write to us.